Therapy is usually adjusted based on a biomarker of disease, but until recently there has not been an accessible biomarker in Parkinson's disease. This has resulted in empirical adjustments of medication and deep brain stimulation, or DBS, based on assessment of motor and non-motor behavior. Increased beta band power and prolonged beta band burst durations in the subthalamic nucleus, or STN, are neural features of the Parkinsonian state, and both medication and DBS attenuate beta power and burst durations at therapeutic levels. The optimal location for STN-DBS is the site where there is greatest beta power. Another predictor of STN-DBS efficacy is the accurate placement of the DBS lead in the sensory motor region. However, it is difficult to visualize the location of the DBS lead after, after the patient has left the surgical suite. In this study, we demonstrate for the first time that the percentage of the sensory motor region that was modulated by STN-DBS correlated with the degree of attenuation of beta power and beta burst durations, and both correlated with the improvement in bradykinesia in freely moving people with Parkinson's disease fully implanted with the first generation of sensing DBS system. 10 people with Parkinson's disease who had previously been implanted with a sensing neurostimulator in the subthalamic nucleus performed a wrist flexion extension task. Here you will see one example of a patient performing the wrist flexion extension task side by side with the trace of the angular velocity of the movement. This task is a validated quantitative assessment of progressive bradykinesia, where the participant repetitively flexes and extends at their wrist. Participants were asked to perform this task at five different randomized intensities of DBS between 0 and 100% of their clinical stimulation, while we recorded synchronized neural and kinematic signals. We saw that performance improved across participants as stimulation levels were increased towards 100% of clinical stimulation, with individuals showing an improved ability to maintain faster velocities for the duration of the task. This allowed us to quantify the percent improvement in behavior from the 0% stimulation condition for each incremental increase in stimulation. It is well established that individuals with PD show exaggerated power within the beta frequency band, which we term the beta oscillopathy. The red lines mark the peak within the beta frequency band in one individual. With increasing stimulation intensity, there was an attenuation of this beta oscillopathy in a dose-dependent manner. However, recent evidence suggests that this exaggerated power within the beta frequency band fluctuates over time and may be better characterized as bursts. Long duration bursts have been thought to be indicative of the pathological Parkinsonian state. We, thought, we saw that as stimulation intensity was increased, the distribution of the bursts became shorter on average, possibly representing a more physiological state. When we compared the improvement in bradykinesia to the change in average beta burst durations, we saw that greater improvements in bradykinesia with stimulation was associated with shortening of beta bursts. We then reconstructed lead locations within the STN for all participants in order to evaluate the effect of placement on both improvements in behavior and reduction in the beta oscillopathy. We calculated the volumes of tissue modulated at each intensity of DBS and found that greater overlap of the sensory motor portion of the STM was associated with greater shortening of beta burst durations. Then, when looking at the 3D interaction between these three domains, we see that improvement in bradykinesia hinges on shortening of beta bursts alongside modulation of the sensory motor portion of the STM. Together, our results show that the interaction between phys physiology, anatomy, and behavior by showing that DBS-related improvements in behavior are contingent on the reduction in the beta oscillopathy and stimulation overlap of the sensory motor portion of the STN. The physiological relevance of beta burst durations during movement supports the feasibility of utilizing beta burst durations as a biomarker for a neural closed-loop DBS system in which stimulation intensity is modulated based on the beta burst dynamics. For instance, stimulation can be reduced during periods of short normal bursts or increased during prolonged pathological bursts. 
we envisioned that our findings could be translated to better inform clinical programming to optimize therapy. With the advent of commercially available sensing neurostimulators, it is now possible for a clinician to record the beta oscillopathy in the clinic. Additionally, pre- and post-operative imaging are frequently conducted for DBS, and there is a growing interest in utilizing lead placement and volumes of tissue modulated to inform therapy. Lastly, the increasing availability and ease of use of movement sensors and wearables allows the quantification of movement with higher resolution than clinical scales. Here we show our vision of combining all three of these factors in a clinician tablet to allow for better informed adjustments of therapy. Thank you.